hello and welcome to episode 5 of Logical Optimisms. Today's topics is about POV, making your own build from scratch, and how you can stop following guides and making your own build. So that's what we're going to talk about. Joining me here today is my amazing co-host and good friend, Noogie, and the beautiful, stunning Uber Elite. It is Hi. episode 6. Hey. That's true. Isn't it 5? I thought it was 3. Okay, it's an there's into an, the intro. It's an episode. There is an it's one ep, it's plus one from the last one. It's a number. Yes. Um are we already at six? I thought we were on five, but Vero made the screen, so he put six on there. I'm pretty sure it's five. Anyway, nice. um, this is the professionalism that you can come to expect and the, the beautiful content we can come from us. Yes. So, yeah. So, uh, Uber Elite is the guest today, and he's known for making a lot of builds, and he's super five-head, very smart person. So, we wanted him for this podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Look Pretty forward good. for yeah. some um, PUB talks. Oh, I, wanna... well, I have what some we... candy over here, but I don't, I don't know. I'm not grabbing no, it. No, no. Fat Noogie. You're going to get I'm fat. Very bad, yes. Um, which I'm currently getting because I've had ice cream five times this week. Yes. Uh, I noticed. Uber, can you... Uh, let, let's go up to speed with what Uber Elite has been doing this day. What have you been doing? Tell us what what have you been up to. Uh, I've mostly been trying to stick to like the summoner side of things where... Um, just experimenting with a whole bunch of different summoners and uh especially like zombie skelly because pride is a new thing and there's all the physical scaling stuff that we can do now um and also with the discovery of the new specters slave drivers it's been pretty interesting and i've also been doing it because i kind of want to like give them feedback on where i think summoners are kind of like weak right now hmm. so well they knew the slave drivers? Well, that was something changed this league, or um, haven't they the... always been? Haven't they been there for a while? They've been there for a while. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons why they're actually decent now. Is because like convocation changes because they have really weird AI. Uh huh. Um, and cannibal fire eaters got nerfed because I, right. which I assume is because mm. they got added to the earlier acts. So. Um, they they like lowered the cast speed on them so they kind of um, got like stealth nerf and and you've been doing a lot with the uh, pledge of hands right Uber? uh with the slave drivers yeah and do you feel like oh, that nice. like how how good are specters right now are they like really strong are they underrated um they're pretty good uh there is there are some like minor annoyances with them like Slave drivers do have like an auto attack, so they they like sometimes like smack things, and hmm. that's not good damage. They also have a taunt for whatever reason. Oh, huh. it's kind of nice though, isn't it? Doesn't that lower damage taken for for you as well? No, not taunt, that kind or... of taunt. It's just like oh. an idle, a literal idle animation. Like you know when oh, you're fighting oh, a Zaro like, and he like does else. like a point <laughs> line. Oh. Are you a martyr? Like. They, ha okay. they have one of those. Thankfully, it's a global cooldown. So one of them does it, then none of them can do it for a while. <laughs> nice taunt, bro. Yeah, just insult the monsters. That's pretty funny. Yeah, um, that's literally what they do. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're, we're going to move into our first topic, which is path of building. And path of building, for those of you who don't know, we can actually show it, is a third-party program, which is probably the single most useful thing for a Path of Exile player, and I know a lot of people don't if you like. Want to make builds, at least. Just in general, I think it's just, no matter what, it's just, yeah, you should have right. it. No, yeah, you're right. There's like a lot of things yeah. you can do with. Yeah, That's for for yeah. everything, it's super useful. Even if you generally don't like third party programs, it is. Yeah, it's crazy, and it's safe. So yes. Um. Yeah. Here is part of the building, and then you have lots of tabs and stuff, and it can be a little complicated, like how do you do things, and and what do you do, and how do you read it and understand it. So that's part of what we're gonna like sort of go through now. Mm-hmm. 
Maybe start like where, where you enter without having a build up. Just yeah. all the way back. Do you want to start going through it a little bit, Noogie? And then Uber, they can talk a little bit about like configurations and calcs later. And then I'll show things that you're talking about on stream. I think uh, the first thing is like just how to get started with it, right? After downloading it. Mm. So you obviously want to just pull up your own um, account. And you can do that right there with Scissorman. I can't really, I don't know like how much delayed this is. Shouldn't be much uh, delay. And and something yeah. to add with the account stuff. Remember that you can put in anyone's name here. Yes. It doesn't just have to be yours. So if you're wondering about uh, Noogie's build or want his POB, you can just type in Noogie. I was just about to say this. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, this is... If you're ever... If you're just starting out and you want to... Um, you're like looking at someone and you're thinking, their build looks good. You type it in. You can even... Uh, you can even just find... If, you, if you're looking at Sis's account... And you have League and it says all, you'll see all his 200 account or characters. So you can just specify it and it's much easier. Yep. There's like a lot of like customization you can do in terms of, you know, finding other bills, finding your own bills and just get started that way. It's also worth noting that your uh, your characters have to be public. Uh, yes. So you need people to go to the POE them. website. You, uh, like, yeah, you can't import people mm. who have private profiles and yeah. i think the characters are uh hidden by default so you have to like log into the poe website uh go to your account and go to your privacy settings to make sure that that's not hidden yeah otherwise you're not going to be able to import mm -hmm. uh how do we um how should we go through this mm. i mean we have your build here yeah, you can talk about the tree and like how to read things and stuff. Obviously, this is slightly easier for me since I have it open on my screen. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. You can. How about how about you just go through and we, we'll just input. Right. Okay. You know. So here you have the tree screen, and something that's really really useful about things is you might not always know exactly which nodes are better. Like I remember I had one build where. I wasn't really sure, like, should I be going for more crit multiplier and crit chance? Or should I be going for, for example, more spell damage? Like, these nodes here were fairly new at the time, like the Arcane Swiftness. And they give you percentage spell damage for, based on your percentage chance to block attack damage. And I found out that it was like 15% more damage to get just more spell damage than to get more crit multi. And something that's really great about the tool is it shows you, for most things, not everything, like, both in-game and POB aren't perfect on everything. Um, but uh, they, they, like, they show you really, really better numbers than in-game for most things. And you can get a better accurate representation on especially things like effective crit chance and crit chance. Like, something that can be really hard to calculate is things like Assassin's Mark because they increase the base crit and stuff like that. And uh, like here we can see that with with Assassin's Mark, Power Charges, and uh, a Diamond Flask active, I have 78% effective crit chance on this. Whereas in-game, it's harder to see that. Yeah, I think one of the one thing that'll kind of blindside a lot of people is, is how to get the... Or it's hard to evaluate as a new player, or even as a veteran, um, what nodes are actually the most powerful, right? Yes. Even when you think that, oh, I need more crit multi or I even need more crit chance. I think this league, one thing that stood out to me the most, especially on melee builds, is that you don't, you're not really required to go higher than 50% crit chance on stuff like Cyclone, for instance. Like yes. going for, so the only ways to really increase your crit chance beyond like 50% in a reasonable way is either having... Uh, I mean, really good weapons with high base crit, but I was playing Slayer, right? So you have the 8, and even on those I had uh, I had 50. So you need stuff like Power Charges and Assassin's Mark. And then anything that's just like raw crit chance on the tree is actually really bad compared to just mm -hmm. getting some of the better stats. Even, even stuff like Attack Speed usually outscales just crit chance on the tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Actually, you were you were talking about knowing what nodes to take and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know who any any preference on who wants to talk about power nodes. Uber. Um, 
You mean the showed no power button? Yeah. Yeah, that is a really nice button to have. I think a lot of people don't even know it exists or what it does, because whenever I post something with that activated, it's like, why do your nodes look different than mine do? <laughs> so basically what this does is um, the bright red circles... Uh, represent high damage nodes like red circles and uh, they're darker red if they're lower damage and the brighter they are the more damage they're going to give you if you allocate them in your build and so it really helps out in deciding what clusters are the best for you at the time so and the blue nodes are mostly for defenses although generally speaking I just kind of uh, I don't generally use that too much, but it's interesting. Why well, don't you use it that much? The blue yeah. nodes, it's... Um, oh, the blue ones, right. Yeah. The blue nodes in, in particular, um, they give very specific defenses, and that's something yeah. that you kind of have to judge for yourself on how much yeah. you're actually going to get out of those. Yeah. Because like you might not feel like you need more regen or armor because you have a whole bunch of leech and you hit really fast. And so. one thing that's worth noting is you can see here, even if I'm like, so here I'm, th this build that we have open right now is a mm -hmm. Cyclone, Caswell Channeling, Volatile Dead build. So you can see that if I switch from the Volatile Dead to the Cyclone part, you can see that it's updating the skill tree and showing, well, this is what's good for the Cyclone and this is what's good for the Volatile Dead. And then, especially for this build, I want to try to get things that are good for both of them. So I can scale not just my Cyclone, but also my Volatile Dead. And then while hovering over them, there's really important things to note. Like, for example, on the bottom part here, it says allocating this nodes and all the nodes leading to it will give you, for example, 2,300 per point. Here is 2,100 per point. Like, just because a node at the end, like, for example, yeah. here in Cleaving... Just because the node at the end is super strong doesn't mean that it's worth taking, including all the traveling nodes. Um, the timeless jewels in particular, the Doriani ones, have a lot of issues with this where you have a lot of things like 40% chaos damage and 25% withered on hit. And so many people are like, wow, that's so great, 40% chaos damage. But because generally all the traveling nodes, like the small ones, will do nothing, then they're a lot of the time not worth taking at all. Yeah, it's the same case with like Glorious Vanity as well. With the uh, one that makes all the small nodes do nothing. Yeah. It's uh, definitely something that's worth considering is looking at those bottom nodes. Yeah, um, and the the Glorious Vanity one, that's the Parandus Jewel, and all the small nodes, like you've said, get turned into the price of glory, which gives nothing no. for your build. That's not glorious vanity. Oh no, glorious vanity is the ball one. It's yeah, you're right. No. It's uh, oh, yeah. eternal hubris. Yes. Yeah, etern oh, yeah, elegant hubris. Yeah, I think elegant. I think it. elegant hubris is like the one that's the hardest to, you know, get something useful out of if you're just talking about. Yeah, because uh, you need everything on two or three yeah. pointers. Yeah. Like whenever there's Basically. four pointers, then it's not that great. It's not too yeah. bad on the eighty percent ones because that's still twenty percent per point. Yeah, it's true. And the if best, it's given you... Go on. Uh, the best spots for those are outer top left and outer top right, because those both hit one-pointers and a whole right. bunch of three-pointers. You mean here? No, he's talking about the uh, top left and top right with the stat yeah. points. Yeah, the like elemental damage and the mono one, the mono jewels. Hmm. They they hit the 30, the 30 stat nodes. Yeah. yeah. I think those are the... For if you're looking for a <clears throat> more of a if you if you're just like gambling and you just need one or two good notes, I think those po uh, those points are probably the best to yeah. gamble for because yeah. they lead into a good uh, keystone as well. So if it is like you want the keystone and then one or two good notes, you can just keep either divining, well, probably not divining, but buying for that specific keystone, yeah, and just seeing if it fits in one of those two, and you can actually get a lot of power that way. That's something I've been doing myself. Yep. Yeah, That's I have, I I have one. I have one that gives like 160 minion damage and 80 mm -hmm. minion life. It's pretty nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then purple in the power notes is the reservation stuff. And actually, what's this? Oh, because it's 
<clears throat> yeah, it's because both it's both offensive and de mm, defensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. And um, with skills and stuff, it can be a good way to find out what is like a good support gem. But it can also that can slightly. I want. I want to warn a little bit about that because it can be slightly baity as well. For a lot of skills, elemental focus will be one of the highest ones. Yeah. But especially if you're like a cold damage or a lightning damage seal, then you are sacrificing quite a lot. For fire seals in general, it's pretty easy to justify using elemental focus because a lot of builds don't care about the ignite. But if you're losing shock, um, what you lose is you're, you're shocking the enemy. And so you lose a lot of damage that way, which doesn't really appear in path of building. Um, it is important with fire builds because combustion is yeah. also lowers enemy resistances. Which, it won't show up high unless you mark the enemy as ignite and you don't have any other combustion link yeah. in your gear. Yeah. Something, like, there, there's a couple of things that are, like, with, with looking at skills and the configuration, uh, a couple of things are a bit frustrating to not, like, get, sort of. For example, hypothermia, right? For so many builds yeah. and in game, hypothermia won't show up, right? This is currently showing that it's doing zero damage, even if I was chilling and freezing things. And what you need to do then to get things like that to work is you need to have enemies chilled online. And now you can see if the enemy was chilled that it's adding actually a large amount of damage 16,000, which is pretty much the same as elemental focus. It's only 500 damage behind elemental focus. And, um,. Obviously, you can still deal ailments. So there are a lot of things that you sometimes need to turn on, like full life. And there are things that you sometimes don't want to turn on. There are... With, um, with hypothermia, you need to uh, you need to chill first, right? So it's, mm -hmm. it's like a two-step yes, as well. Yes, it never works so on the first two. Yep. Yeah. So if you're for Herald of Ice and stuff like that, when you're not necessarily chilling before it kills something, then it does nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it gives uh, you the freeze chance. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. Uh, also, I want to go back. Um, if if I can go back real quick to the mm -hmm. no power thing. Mm -hmm. Say you're like, you have some sort of colorblind thing. You can also actually change the colors of the oh. uh, power uh, in the oh. option. You can do red, green, or green, blue instead. You can also add th thousand separators in the sidebar to make it easier to read. Yes. Go Where's down that? the, the options, options, bottom, bottom, bottom left. left. Oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's I knew amazing. You're probably have a thousand separators now, I aren't you? Yeah, I knew. That one I knew. I didn't know about the blue one or the uh, colorblind stuff. That's interesting. That's nice. That's great for colorblind people. Mm -hmm. Um, The thing I was about to bring up that um, sometimes in like field beats, especially on the Path of Excel forums, there will be loads of people that have like, you know, a 2% or a 5% shock, right? Just something that hits very mm. fast and very small hits. So you're never going to get a big shock. There's no way in hell you're shocking, especially a boss for 50%. But people will turn this on. It's like, yeah, my build shocks. I got 20, 20 lightning damage on my build. It shocks. It's crit. So a lot of people turn this on. But this in POB is always a 50% more multiplier to your damage. You can see that it takes my hit from 40,000 to 60. So generally, especially on fast hitting builds like Cyclone, like if you're a Cyclone Starforge or something, you're very likely not going to get a 50% shock. You're more likely getting it like a 10 or a 20, which is a more multiplier to your damage. I think this is like one of the most common mistakes to see people do, especially even if they have, well, I have Vol Lightning Trap, right? Or I have a Vink or whatever it is that they have that provide some kind of shock and they think they can click the node but the thing is the the shock will on pub is the 50 percent, like the maximum shock it's not counting in the the lesser shocks that you can get from other sources yep yep i wish we had that actually thanks for like elementalist shock and yeah. stuff which is 20 percent. yeah vinkdar is 10 mm -hmm. yeah i wish there was a i wish like shock on the ring it, the focus yeah yeah, I wish there was like a, a box for that, but you kind of have to do some workarounds to 
uh, get something like that to work. Yeah, I mean, like, an easy way to figure out. For, say you're an element list, right? Which is, is it? Oh, it's 15 now. Because uh, they got nerfed. But, like, oh, you can shit. just open up, like, a calculator for the element list one. And say that I was an element list, right? And I had 41,105. You could literally just go 1 times 15. And then I, it would be 47,000. Um, because it's a 15% more multiplier. Focus Shock, I think, is 50%. No, 20. Uh, it's 20. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's assuming no Shock. Oh, I would be using Focus Shock on every build. Oh, yeah. You don't have 50. enough hotkeys for most things. Oh, dude, 50. I really want to use crazy. Focus. Yeah, but, I like, hotkeys, though. Yeah, you would only... find a way to fit it in. If it was 50, 100%. There's so many good focus Why would right you now, use though. Ancestral War Chief if that gave 50? Oh, yeah. God, that'd be crazy. Yeah. I want focus skills to like be easier to use. I'm surprised we don't have a hotkey for it. Yeah. They should just give it a hotkey for it. Yeah. That'd be nice. Um, But yeah, like you, there will be a lot of path of building warrior ring where people will like, yeah, I have this sometimes. <laughs> I think I think this is the place in PoE where you need to be, you know, just honest with yourself. Don't mm -hmm. the only one you're you're fooling if it's like, oh yes, I actually got my bill to five million. You you didn't. It's probably five hundred k or a million maybe. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's just you're you're not really. And then because then what's gonna happen is you're gonna go on shaper and you're gonna be like, well, my bill has five five million. The same with that guy and he. The dumpster said, and I, I, it takes forever for me. What's going on? Yep. And it's because you weren't really, you know, being truthful to what kind of things you were actually having on, on the PUB. And Nugi brings up a good point with Shaper here under for effective DPS. You can tick if the enemy is a boss. If you tick no, then it's basically you're checking how fast do I kill white monsters, which hopefully should be one hit anyway. Um, and then you can check for a standard boss or shape or a guardian. And POB tells us here that, for example, on a standard boss, you get 33% less curse effect and they have some resistances. And for shapers and guardians, then it's 66% less curse effect and a lot more resistances. And that makes things like minus enemy resists or penetration a lot better. For shaper. Yeah. And then curse is better the lower tier content you do, so regular bossing and just mapping, curses are a lot stronger there. Mm -hmm. But they're really bad against anything Shaper and Uber tier and that kind of stuff. They're actually not too bad now. They actually got buffed ever since the curse effect got lowered from 80 to 60. So... Mm. When was this? They lowered that? Um, one or two leagues ago, I think. Yeah. They also did some rebalance, though. To they stuff nerf. like Enfeeble in and Temp Chain. So, yeah. like, the defensive curses are on par to what they were before, right? But the offensive curses are a lot better now against the, uh, against boss encounters. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, you gotta be careful about some guys will put, like, fake numbers in on, like, resistances and stuff. <laughs> there's, there's so much but... of it. That is something that is actually okay to do in, in certain instances, right? Because yeah. you might have your helmet that's been fossil crafted with minus nine mm -hmm. resist. And when you look at that in POB, maybe you can pull it up and just show people. Because you will notice in POB that the item will have red text, meaning that it's not that's actually being taken into account. Yeah. Well, yeah. But whenever whenever you get items with red text, it means that POB is not actually taking that stat into account. And you have to go in and then alter your POB or generate, um, I don't know, like fake items or customized items to then make it so you can see what you're actually getting. Yes. Yep. Or um, in the configuration, lower the resist. And then it's okay to do so. Yeah. So for a fossil crafted helmet, you would just... Uh... Like, say you're doing, like, a Cyclone Slayer and you have Jagged Fossil Helmet uh, where nearby enemies take 9% uh, increased Fizz damage. That's basically um, minus 9% Fizz damage reduction. So mm -hmm. you just go into the config and you put negative 9 in there. Yeah, I would say on the Jagged Fossil, that's the wrong way to do it from a, oh. you know... 
perfectionist standpoint because that stat stacks with everything else, right? Damage taken. We have all the maim now, especially if you're playing a gladiator. That stat can actually be diminished all the way down to like five percent instead of the nine. Right? I don't know if that I don't know if that is additive on POB. Uh, I actually need to check that. But for all the other resistances, it, it works fine. Yeah. One good that's point the only one that's clear. with oh, something like this is, for example, for calculating impale, that's something you need to put in to POB because that's also never yes. calculated. So what I did, for example, for my champion build here, there is a spreadsheet, which uh, for the people watching on YouTube, I'll try to get the spreadsheet linked in the description down below. But uh, there's a spreadsheet where you can calculate your impale, especially for a champion. So here you can see that I, to my diet below, I've added like the amount of flat fists that I would be getting from my impale and the, the more multiplier to melee damage. Um, so if you're opening up like a build like this with no explanation, then you're going to be like, well, how do I get this died below? This died below looks amazing. But that's just like the fake <laughs> impale stats because it's 102 more damage and lots of flat fists. And that's how we got like 5.7 million damage on this build with not that much investment. So it's actually a yeah. crazy high damage build. Um, and speaking of Uber Relief, do you want to talk to people a little bit about Impale and how to do that? See if I can find the sheet. Um, I actually like barely have done <laughs> Impale. <laughs> no, you have used it, right? Sure, yeah. I've used a lot of Impale. Yeah. I just never calculated it. I found it awesome. Right. So it's there isn't there isn't a very straightforward to me to just like give you a line to say how it works. I would say go in and tinker with it in the so there's a spreadsheet with an impale calculator. What I can say is that the most important thing about impale is to reach a hundred percent impale chance. That's like number one. So you, you should you should optimize for a hundred percent impale chance. Impale effect, however. Uh, works like any other additive multiplier. So once you have the impale chance at 100, then let's say you have 90 impale effect. Then there's been this idea in the community for a while that getting 10% impale effect is crucial. You have to get it because impale is insane. And so therefore those nodes are insane. But if you are going out of your way to getting the impale effect, then that might give you, let's say you're getting, you're spending three points to get another 10% impale effect. And then that 10% will give you, oh, I don't remember the number, but it's probably going to be something in the lines of like an 8% more damage increase. And so you need to then go in and check, okay, I'm spending three points to get an 8% more damage increase, meaning that I'm getting a little bit less than three. And if I then look at my POB, what could I get instead? So it gets really complicated because yeah. you constantly have to like weigh how much am i getting and the tree doesn't do it for you so you kind of have to then you know figure it out um it is really powerful though getting to uh to 100 and the notes on the tree are really strong especially uh, for a champion yes i would say this though forceful skewering is a trap for a lot of builds yes it gets to be because there are good ways of getting impale effect, dread banner, even the um, even the craft, which is just eight chaos on weapons, which is a little less is a little less uh, physical damage percent added yeah. to your weapon, but it gives you twenty impale chance, and if that if that can save you four points, then all of a sudden you know even with the ten percent effect I was as I was talking about earlier, that does not justify spending like those four points of getting to to that cluster yeah i yeah. actually ended up dropping first was curing in mine that's yeah. been that's been what i'm been telling a lot of people like don't just don't take those path a little bit differently save four points and use them somewhere else because melee trees right now are really tight yeah yeah and there's sorry, there's God. always room for like uh getting more damage uh, I did play one melee build, and I uh, like I said I, you know, don't have much experience with impale, but that's mostly because I haven't calculated it. But it, it's pretty clear that forceful skewering, if you can drop it and still have a hundred impale chance, you probably should, just because yeah. like there's there's always going to be some sort of damage cluster you're going to skip. Like if you're playing a two hander, you're probably skipping something like wrecking ball, yeah, or whatever else. You just can't take all the damage and still yeah. have like high life 
Um, and as far as the calculator goes, like, it's fairly straightforward to figure out. I'll explain it a little bit. Your attacks per second, you just, like, figure out what. Like, so, for example, this, the theory crafted version, this isn't how it ended up in, in reality. But the theory crafted version was 9.4, um, per second. And then you would put in that here. So, like, 9, 9.4. And time spent attacking. This was mostly I was testing, like, how high is my damage on bosses. So I'm going to be attacking for at least three seconds, right? I'm going to be standing, spinning on the boss and spinning for three seconds. Chance to impale is 100, and my chance to hit is 100 because I'm a champion. And again, because I'm a champion, my impale is 7. If you get the, there's a watcher's eye, which is like less than additional 2, then it would be 9. Um, but for, if you're not a champion, then this is 5. And something I've seen a few people fuck up on as well. If you're not a champion, you're only copy-pasting in the more physical damage. Not yeah. the fat physical. So, for a champion, you copy-paste both of these and add them to an item. And for anything else, you only take the more physical damage. Because there is no fat physical unless you're a champion. So, that's very, very important to know. So, then, what you do is you, like, go to an item. So, the one I was using on was died below. And then, obviously, this one already has it. But then you just add it at the bottom and you click save. And boom, it uh, like adds it in. So that's yeah. how we get like so high damage with face breakers at the moment. And one thing to note about, um, I think it's something that's important to understand about what's it called uh, impale as well. Is so whenever you add these stats in, and then you're you'll be looking at oh I got to a million DPS right again in my pub. But I'm not really feeling the impact in maps, even though I have an effective DPS of a million and I haven't cheated anywhere. But if you're if you're so heavily invested into say impale, and you're you're essentially delaying your damage output. So if you're do using like a slightly slow attacking build and you don't ramp up your stacks fast enough, you've got not uh you're not um what's it called? You're not really benefiting from the impale. You're front. not ramping up fast enough. Yeah. And this is actually a case where you kind of have to. With Poison, you didn't have to. Because Poison, you could just, if you had a big hit, the Poison would then just, you know, be a big Poison. But Impale actually needs to ramp up to to uh, to get that 100 damage multiplier. So it's great on Cyclone when you hit 10 times a second. because but if you only get to hit a monster five times, I think before, um, let's say you hit hit it five times um, before the monster dies, then you've only, I think you get something like a 60% total effect of your impale. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. it's something like that. So you, you potentially, that all that damage invested is, is just, it's not really being realized. And this is especially key in mapping characters where you want to, you know, come in, quickly deal with the pack and then move on but yeah. you're not getting the ramp fast enough so it's always going to be you know there's always going to be this delay before you can move on so that's why impale builds kind of need for mapping purposes to be on fast attacking builds mm -hmm. for bossing you can have a slow attacking build i would say and it's just or, fine or they have to be like multi-hitting skills yeah. like um like Two of the best skills that I've seen for Impale are actually not not even melee. They're uh, Rain of Arrows and Tornado Shot. Yeah. Hmm. Those two are actually yeah. really, really good at Impale. Yeah, Impale's crazy. Oh, if you can really if you can if you can take advantage of the Impale and get a skill that gives good ramp, it's crazy strong. Mm -hmm. so... Yeah, there's a lot of fun things. It just I wish there was more like I'm surprised it Hot, shouldn't um, be that much work to put it into POB because the the form is. Could you easy. um could you try something, sis, with mm -hmm. your build right there? Well, what what's the damage with and without the impale stuff on your current character? Uh, let me put in a normal um, die below. Yeah, just to see like the just... difference here. So usually what I do for that is um I just edit the item and I just put a hashtag in front of the stats I want to get rid of. Because yeah. I also want... So that's how much less? It's 5 million. Sorry, 2.5 million less. So it's 2.5 times... So it's 2.5 times more damage once you've ramped up. Yeah. Right. So like, imagine if you 
if you were just using a, a slower attack there, then you would actually be losing out on so That's why Cyclone is so good right now. Yep. It's actually great. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how like I've actually yeah. I didn't even have time to make a guide for this build, but I've had so many people like follow the play with me anyway, mm -hmm. and loads of people are like, "Hey, sis, I like followed your guide anyway," and I like insta do Elder. So it's like it's it's crazy. Yeah. So Impale is probably gonna get nerfed next thing. I'd say. It's a bit. I. A little bit. Yeah. It's a bit busted. It I can see the Impale effect getting lowered. I think Impale is going to last simply because Pure Fizz hasn't been viable in... Yeah. Since the think... start of PoE, really. I think Other than, Champion like, Bleed Puncture them. Traps. Which was a thing right. for Ziri. Right. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. It's, it's... I think another thing as well, especially it can be hard to do anything that isn't easy to see the difference on, like, math -wise. Like, Hypothermia or... Um, yeah. impale like it's just it's hard to tell yeah um so knowing how to put them in are really really important especially like all the like new jewels like the timeless jewels are a pain because you have to put in so much custom stuff in pob to make them actually appear in pob and yeah. and then you can see in like your calculations like this this isn't like done for this right now but on one of my other, I had like one using the Doriani timeless jewel. No, not Doriani. Um, Debaqua, I think it is. The one that does the chaos stuff. And my yeah. mitigations here were like 009, 006, 006. It was like crazy high mitigations. Um, and this screen was probably what took me the longest time to start using. I, th I don't think I used mm. all of it yet. Uh, but yeah. I, I feel like this is the most ignored screen. The, the calculation screen. So for so many things here, you can see like what type of damage you're doing and and what type is the damage. It's like, for example, sometimes you'll be like a righteous fire build and people will have forgotten to have no fire damage, but they still have EE, which means they are buffing the monsters and giving them more resist. And you can very easily see all that thing here by going through um, a little uh, a little note here on the calc screen. If anyone wants to, you know, min max for defenses, go into con config first, and then so right now your armor is telling you that it gives a uh, eighty percent fist damage reduction. Now go in and then take uh, enemy physical hit, Just put it right. like ten k or twelve k, like what you would expect for a shaper hit. Say so that you wanted to make sure you never die from a shaper slam, and you're like, oh, but I have eighty percent mitigation, and I'll go back into the calculation. 35 on the on yeah. from the armor right gets absolutely crushed so you must have a lot of damage taken and all that stuff on since it's going lower no i guess it's just no this this was just like the first this, this uh, okay. wasn't actually particularly tanky it was just like the first yeah. iteration but i think that's like important when you're like when you're looking at your stats being able to correctly assess what they actually do so like plotting in like big hits and small hits and just like playing around will give you a lot of information and it'll really teach you without understanding like the or without knowing the armor calculation just by plotting in some different numbers you'll see the effect of what a high damage physical hit will do to your character yeah um something really useful as well is to hover over the radius thing so if you mm. see if you see the furthest outline the one that's displayed here that's how big cute dog cyclone is. And then if you see the green little circle in the middle, that's how big our cyclone is here. So it's a nice comparison. Um, so part of the, the drawback of the build I was playing here was that the cyclone AOE was very small. It was just an insane amount of damage. Like when I tried it on hardcore and I built quite a lot more defense. So I think I only had 3.5 million damage and it was just like <laughs> clap. Bosses were dead, right? Um, and it was like the um, skill part. Hmm. on the uh couch screen it says no stages oh then, yeah then people can see like how it changes not a lot <laughs> no but i like, just hover over and you can see now it's bigger yeah it's still very small yeah but... very, very small you're using conk effect too aren't you i can't remember yeah it was like just yeah i was yeah, just min maxing my damage conk. it was just min maxing damage for single target but it was it was great it was everything was like being insta killed so that was really fun, but clearing wasn't that fun with it. Yeah. Yeah, and then 
you got insta killed. Yeah, that was actually the endurance charge generation on this. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I was, I was, yeah, trying so... to figure that out, and I think it's because you were one shotting things before Assassin's Mark was even hitting. Mm -hmm. No, 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 because it doesn't have anything to do with us, Mark. No, Assassin's Mark raises your crit chance. Right, but still, I even without us, Mark, I have very, very high crit chance, and I'm hitting eight or seven or something per second. And but you're was... one-shotting them. No, but even on single target, it was dropping off. Mm. So even if I was like literally like doing shaper or something, it would drop off the crit strikes. So mm. what I should have done in hindsight, I should have had either inexorable or. Uh, the war cry, battle cry thing, and just spammed enduring cry. Then I would have lived. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and, and and it's important to like you know test that stuff because again, like when you're playing these builds in game, they might end up playing differently than you expect, and that's you know one of the things with path of building is it's it's great for planning things, but it doesn't always end up being the case that it ends up making a build good because it, it's important that the build plays well, not yes. just that it has good damage or defenses or whatever else. Things that you think should work mechanically might not work the same way in game. So uh, being able to like, and that doesn't necessarily mean that if something doesn't work as expected, you know, the build's dead. It means you just have to look at other ways of yeah. dealing with those things. Yeah, it was kind of annoying because that's what I was doing on this build. I was sitting there thinking like, shit, should I? And I was like pretty much done. I was going to do like one or two more things and then relog. But um, I was thinking, you know what? I think I will actually take the hit and go a juggernaut instead. So it's going to respect a jug instead of champion. Huh. Because I would still have... 1.4 million damage or something which is more than enough for a boss healer but then it should be virtually immortal because then i then i solve all the fist damage issues that i was having but then i died i was like oh yeah couldn't you like a wouldn't it another choice instead of swapping to jug maybe swap up some of the greedier items you're on i see you're running like a the shield for instance I did. You I had done that already like this is like for uh, the okay. max damage version that i would feel okay ah. with on softcore Okay. But on hardcore, I'd done, I think I only had 3 or 2.8 million damage. Right, okay. Yeah. I actually had better gear than I theorized. Like, I had a really nice, like, um, shape or steel ring and stuff like mm. that. It was nice. Yeah, and that's, and that's a nice thing to do as well, is um, when you're making a build, just using, just being conservative with yes. the items that you use. Like, yeah. the the most important thing is to, you know... Uh, figure out how much life you're gonna have. You can you can worry about the resistances at another point, unless you're using a ton of uniques, then you would probably start worrying about it. But um, if you're using a bunch of rares and they have open suffixes, then you just need to focus on making sure that your life pool is going to be good with decent life rolls or even crafts. And uh, yeah, just being conservative with the gear that you put and not putting in like beer tier gear that you see on item showcases on reddit and yes. such uh yeah. onto your build so that way when you actually have uh your character running it's probably going to be even better than what you looked at and another thing you can do is if you already have items for the build you can actually just go in game and hover over the item and just cop yeah. and just press Control c and when you go into your items uh, there is a button called craft item or wait, no, it's create custom. And then you just can, uh, you just control V to paste it in and you don't even need that. You don't even need to click create custom. So now I show that I went in game. I control C an item in game. Now control V and it's instantly in. Oh, well, yeah. That's all you need to do. Don't even need to click the button. Okay. And you just I actually, um, did you ever try using the Rosalatus coil in your build? No. Sis? Oh. Okay. I can't <laughs> remember what I ended up with. I'm going to look at the character real quick. Was it called Scissor and Champion, maybe? This is one of those spells. I've never actually played around with it, so I would love to, like, hear what, like, just how it ends up playing. Because really you, you, would, you would assume, no, no, I'm just thinking about the build. 
Oh yeah, I just I'll, used I'll... the life belt. Yeah, yeah. It's just but that's like one of the places where you would assume it would with attacking fast enough it would like kind of even itself out, but Yeah. That's so beautiful, Ring. Mm hmm Right? I remember crafting some of that for you. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was nice. And face breakers are so cheap that yeah. even though that you can like make ridiculous damage with them, and it doesn't show up on tooltip too. People kept asking me like, "What's your tooltip?" Because like they were seeing me like like kill Minotaur in like one one point five <laughs> seconds, and I'm like thirty six thousand. Dude, you should advertise that. Fifty k DPS one shot, Minotaur. <laughs> like, if you, how? If you think this that... doesn't make sense, dude. If you, you think that's good, you should see summoner tooltips. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even have them. I don't think I have any maps on standard, but... I think that's why... I, I, that's like a perfect example of something that a lot of people will... get wrong the first time they play it. They will ask for a tooltip to... to try and evaluate whether or not... even if they're following some streamer's build, and they're trying to evaluate whether or not... Uh, their build is as good, or they've done as good of a job mm -hmm. mimicking that build, and then he will give you a number, and you'll have, so you're the new guy coming in, and you've copied it, and you'll have twice the tooltip, but little did you know that you've been using the wrong support, so you've, you know, whatever, whatever is the reason, you might have actually gone and inflated your tooltip, and then just... You know, made uh, yeah, as a quick example, yeah. like maybe Noogie's using hypothermia, which doesn't show yeah. up in the tooltip, but you're using added lightning, so your tooltip's like, oh, but my tooltip's bigger than Noogie's. Yeah. Lightning yeah. pen as well, right? Yeah. Versus yeah. added lightning is is a good, it's a good one. Exactly. And even even skill mechanics like ball lightning, you might have like yeah. you might end up uh, uh, accidentally like you don't have any aoe on the tree or you don't or you have projectile speed or the other person is using slower proj so uh, your tooltip might be like really high but because your ball lightning moves so fast off the target it's not actually hitting uh, mm -hmm. more times per cast so that part is also misleading and um that's actually one of the reasons back back before we had POB, a lot of people were saying my ball lightning build has to be worse than Ark because because uh, <laughs> Ark has five times the tooltip. It ha it has to be better. Um, one of the things I want to bring up, and one of the reasons I really wanted to do this podcast is, especially for people playing trade league, going off meta builds as well, especially this thing more than ever, is can get you. So so much crazier a build than following the meta so this meta we've had a lot of people going for like cyclone builds and um essence train builds and es essence train is really strong and you can do that ssf and stuff but you have people investing 30 40 50 x into cyclone builds that could be easily beaten by like a spellcaster build on like 2 to 5 x because you can pick up everything so cheap as a quick example, earlier in the league, nobody was really using Eternity Shroud, which in my opinion is one of the most broken items in the game. Um, so I, I believe Eternity Shroud was all the way down to like 30 or 40 C on Softcore and only like 4X on Hardcore. I think they're 14 X on Hardcore now again, so they've gone up again. But yeah. if you're able to piece together a build on your own and like try to figure out like, hey, this was strong two or three leagues ago, is this still strong? Um you can sometimes get a build that is like one or two X, but will be better than somebody that is following a meta build and is putting 30 to 40 X into their build. So I will say though, with the league mechanic, how it is, there is a reason why Cyclone and ED, cause Cyclone and ED are not uh, budget heavy. They, they, they will, you can go in with a low budget and, and do very well. But they engage with the league mechanics so well compared to a lot of other skills. So I do think that there is truth in the you can make put something together at a low cost and you can make something that is arguably power, powerful. But then there's also dealing with mechanic, like, just mechanically dealing with like the Legion monolith is something that needs to be taken into account because not all spell builds, even if they're like super powerful in previous leagues. And they're like super budget will actually compete with a low budget cyclone on ed just because yeah. of how they mechanically work but i mean like if you really want to do something off meta one thing to look at is like if there is um 
uniques that you could use in a build. Say like, uh, I did um, I did a zombie skelly build on a pretty easy budget because um, the league drops random six link unique items sometimes. So I got a queen's escape that was six linked or queen's queen's decree that was six linked for like forty chaos, and I just upgraded it with the prophecy, which was two chaos, and that was that was a six link right there. And yeah. I was clearing red maps just fine with that. And... Yeah, summoners is a great example. Like you really yeah. been playing a lot of summoners this thing, not bad. Like you've picked up a lot of items for fairly cheap. Oh yeah. Although bound pulses are really expensive because Herald of Agony is still a thing. <laughs> yeah. Still surprised that hasn't been nerfed more. Thanks, Ziz. Not just my fault, I'm sure. <laughs> um but yeah, like another example was the the bees. I did bees, and I'm probably gonna remake it at some point. The amulet is like one C, and I had like had a really low investment, very very cheap build, and it was like popping shaper in like 20 seconds at level 78. I was like, wow, this is great. Um, whereas obviously, if you if you end up getting stuck in sharing, either sharing or using a lot of the most popular items, then it just it's it ends up so crazy because you can get off meta jewels that are like life double damage. Or like 2c right yeah or 1c even um yeah even with the like even with the jewels like the abyss jewels they they also drop rare jewels like a lot the yeah. legions yep. yeah they do one thing in particular if you're playing something really niche like i remember there was one league where i did armageddon brand staff and mm -hmm. i got all my jewels for four prop like literally like three damage stats and life on every single jewel which, you know, if you're on a meta build, that's like 4 to 6x per jewel. I bought them for 3 to 10c per. So it was like, great, because nobody was using that. So that's why I really want to push like the idea of like, try to think outside the box and not just like chase down yeah. the meta. Yeah, especially for like 6 link staffs too. Yeah. You get you can get a 6 link staff for like 12 mm -hmm. chaos because of... Um, not only because people don't really play it, but also because... Um, the Dark Mage card exists, mm. although that's item level 55. That lets you get like a plus two or something on it. Yeah, it's crazy. Something I did uh, this week, I bought a, I bought a six link staff for 20C, 20 or 30C. Then I just spammed Aberrant's Fossils on it because I wanted to make an ED build. I wanted to have big damage. And so I saw, um, who was it, uh, Embu? So Ember bought the unique cane stuff, right? Because a lot of people were finding um were finding just six links off the monolith. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, so randomly you'll have some of these uniques, but then people caught on to that that staff was like really powerful. So then that spiked up by like four times the cost. I was like, hmm, don't want to spend four X on that stuff since I'm just making an MF build. So which, I went Which one? The Unraveling Cane? Yeah, the Unraveling yeah. Cane. I actually have that. So I did I just bought a six link for 20c and then spammed aberrant fossils on it until I hit plus two with um, what was it, like just 20 percent non chaos multiplier and then I craft on chaos damage and um, what was it duration and mm. that cost me less than one exalt and I had a six link yeah and it gave me 50 percent more damage it's where crazy. I thought in the beginning I wanted to shield charge around but something I realized is that. Shield charge isn't actually that important anymore on a lot of bills. You yeah. can just flame, flame dash, dash run. So nice now. Yes. It's so okay. good. Even Leap Slam is pretty decent now. Yeah. Um, so we've we've talked a lot about POB, and a lot of people mm -hmm. probably still have a lot of questions with creating a build. Particularly like where do you start and like how do you choose things like ascendancies and something that's very important before starting a build is you kinda wanna know the skeleton idea of, of where to go. We'll open POB again, even just for this, because it, there was a there was a heat chart that somebody posted to Reddit of the most and least taken nodes, right? Mm. And then you'll see most builds are very samey. Like if I go look at like a couple of my builds here, um, let's look at for example, uh, like here's here's the ED build, right? For like so yeah. many, um, for so many like shadows, assassins and stuff, they're going to be sharing a lot of nodes and a lot of traveling. 
you're gonna most likely a lot of the builds are gonna have like the same like blood siphon blood drinker and written in blood like there'll be a lot of sharing like that so you want to figure out um the base nodes you're going to be taking like a lot of the duelists and marauders they're going to be taking the scion life wheel and then probably life nodes like bravery and heart of the warrior right a lot of these are going to be shared for nearly every single build and you you want to um, like i don't want to go too heavy into ci but at least for life builds on hardcore i normally aim for at least 180 to 200 percent increased life on software you're probably okay with like 150 160. So you want to make sure that you get like that amount of defense uh especially as a new player because then you might you might not feel brave enough yet to sort of go into like oh i'm gonna set up like this like interesting like mitigation chain with like converting to chaos and stuff that might be more complicated that you get into later when you understand it more but just get like a basic a baseline for defense that you sort of try to get for all your rebuilds you want to be resist capped you want to have like 5k life 5.5k life at least when starting out something like that and yeah. i think i think the total base. life pool is a better thing to try and look for rather than the percent that you should get on the tree because mm -hmm. i think you can trap yourself into chasing nodes that are too far away yes. rather than just swapping a few pieces of your greedy items where you're generating like where you're trying to get high dps on an item well, then just put a beefy piece of gear on there, right? It could be a Calm's Heart, it could be a shield with 150 life on it or whatever. And then you could then take that and then take all the big damage nodes on the skill tree instead. Yeah, you can drop your Devotos for like a 110 life helmet yeah. or something. Yes. That's definitely something on hardcore that most people do that yeah. you see at high level. Yeah. If they want to survive at least. Yep. Yeah. And and as for like choosing ascendancy and stuff, like sometimes I've had people in chat be like, "Sis, I really want a scion." I'm like, "Why?" It's like, "Oh, I just like the scion." I'm like, "But, but why is this like, Oh, this is just the character model's cool, okay?" And I'm like, "Okay, like, I'll give some <laughs> tips." And it's like, um, when you're choosing ascendancy, you kind of want to like think about all the pros and cons. Like, what is this giving me? Like, is it just damage or is it like a utility? As as a quick example, obviously, like the trickster has. The ghost dance and escape artist thing, which is like a very, very, I'd say it's a very special essence here, right? There's nothing else really similar. Yeah. It's like so strong defensively and it's just, just great. Um, whereas like there's, there's other essences, like for example, Berserker, right? This is, there's nothing really like super unique here, right? It's just, oh, do you want some damage with your damage? So put some more damage inside of your damage with some leech. I mean. I feel like I don't know. I think I think Berserker is kind of unique now. It's like the it's the yeah. heaviest ramp. It's like it's I super guess. ramp, and it's I mean the amount of attack speed you get is like unreal. Yeah, it yeah. blows anything else away. So right, but what I mean is that is more raw stance. That's not a unique mechanic, mm. except for the rage stuff. I think it's pretty unique. I, uh, I would, I would, I would give. It, yeah. It's not as. Especially I, the I'll, I'll grant is. you, I'll grant you that it's it's not as out of the box as Ghost, like or the uh, you know that's the charges, sort of what I'm aiming for. Yeah, that's sort yeah, of what I'm yeah. for. Sure. Like the, these are more things that you could get that attack speed in other ways. Like yeah, sure, it's a crazy amount of attack speed and damage, but it's it's more about raw numbers. Whereas yeah. you you want to look at all these NCs, like some things people will give you just like additional projectiles, or like Pathfinder gives you fast regen, which can be really hard to get. Um, so that's why, for example, when you saw a lot of Uberdan's builds, uh, in the past when he kills posts on Hardcore, he would have been like Scion or Pathfinder to get, um, fast charges in a boss fight. Because the, there's not that many ways to get that, although we do have the Precision Watchers right now. I well. like how you don't mention me. I've been playing Pathfinder for the last four years. It's been like my main class. And here you are, speaking you up seen... for yourself. Uber, Uberdan's not on this podcast, so he can't. I spoke for him. Yeah. And <laughs> you know how many builds of Noogies I've seen use Divination Distillate? <laughs> That's true. Especially yeah. before the Max Res got removed from it. Oh, yeah. It was it was like the craziest flask ever for yeah. anything. Yeah. For mapping, for, for bossing, for everything. It's crazy it good. so good. Um, and that's actually our, our planned podcast for one month from now. We're going to be talking a, a full episode about MF. That should be a lot of fun. 
Yeah. We, we plan things, surprisingly. Um, Get Marty on for that if you can. <laughs> that's what we're doing, yeah. Um, but yeah, so choosing your ascendancy. I mean, yeah, you can just go around the character model. And there are ascendancies that are straight up weaker than others right now. Like, for example, I'd say that like, <laughs> Raider is pretty garbage in my opinion right now. <laughs> it's not yeah. a good ascendancy. It doesn't really give yeah. you anything that, you know, you could get like all this shit on like a shaped item probably. The Raider is pretty forehead right now. It's <laughs> such a sad ascendancy, dude. You can even you can even get the ailment immunity on the tree now with a bit of creativity. You could do that yeah. before, but it's even easier now. So now it's like all dead. Yeah, I it think is the, so bad. I think another thing is when you're when you're evaluating ascendancies is like, do you want offense or defense, or do you just want to clear maps, or do you want to do a bit of both, yeah. or yes. do you want to focus on bosses? Because, like, if you want to focus on bosses, you're probably going to want more something defensive, like Jug. Uh, if, you want, if you're just looking to clear maps with, like, a Cyclone build, you're probably looking at Slayer, because Slayer just gives you the AoE. And, like, yeah. the mix is more of something like Champion, where you get the nice defenses, the nice damage, just, like, uh, all of that stuff. Yeah. It's, um... It's uh, something to consider because, like, especially for melee builds, you often have a lot of, um, like, in it, like, you're basically taking like five nodes to get out, and then basically your tree would be the same. You just change like five nodes going out of your start mm -hmm. for the most part. Yeah. So. Slayer, Slayer um, is so popular this day just because of overwhelm is kind of busted. It's it's so funny that we have like Slayer has overwhelm and then you go look what? at Raider. No. I feel like well I guess overwhelm no. is good, but what about the I mean for Cyclone the obvious one has to be the AOE mm -hmm. in the melee range. What do you mean yeah. impact? Yes. Yeah, yeah yeah no it's great but I feel like that that's like yeah impact's great but I feel like overwhelm is busted. Yeah, Overwhelm can be looked at as, like, a, uh, another suffix added to your weapon. So you could just, like, if you're multi-modding a weapon, instead of getting local crit chance, you can just get double damage instead. I think that's where I would say crit is being overrated. Because I, 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 um, I made a character on a jug without having any extra crit on two foils. Basically, with five uh, five point five percent crit chance, mm -hmm. and I, you, the damage was identical. Like, scaling it a little bit differently here and there, the damage wasn't that far off. I mean, it's when you look at when you look at the Slayer node, it gives you what maybe like uh, fifteen percent more damage. Compare that to any other of the biggest energy nodes. That's not that strong. I, I really like the. It's, it's really you good have for so mapping. much investment power, though. It's insane. No, you don't because mm -hmm. you don't. It's it's not because it's power you don't need, especially on Cyclone. Yeah, this is the trap that people fall in. That I I think it's a trap that you think you need this like base grid, because you can get an elder chest. Like let's say you go full man max, you but go elder chest, that. and you. But it doesn't matter. The base crit chance is not that important. I mean, you're going to get crit chance no matter what. If you're investing into crit multi, you're going to get crit chance on the way there. So I get what he's saying. It is it, really it, strong. Like... It's not. A, I, I'm I'm just saying I, I would not consider this node to be quote unquote busted. It's powerful. OK, but, but it's powerful but here's... on the line of any other damage node. OK, but here's there. why I disagree with you, because right now we're in a position where it's so easy to get enough crit that you can even drop diamond altogether and flask are completely busted it just gives you so much and it's up to like even up to 100 crit multi and enemies have less crit multi yes so it's so like for it's mapping, so agree, many it's things really it's like strong. crazy damage and survival and base crit yes. to the point where you can actually get a whole new flask survival i wouldn't really disagree i wouldn't really necessarily agree on because the solaris solaris pantheon exists but, I actually um, like I like the overwhelm a lot, especially when you're fighting sing like uh, when you're going in against rares and you're always close by. So that the first, especially against legion monsters, I would say that this actually yeah. has more value than people give it credit for on the survival part. I think overall oh, yeah. it's incredibly strong node. 
I just think if you're just talking raw damage, it's. I just I don't I, I don't really disagree or I agree with uh, with with its its overall power for mapping. I would agree because you're constantly surrounded. Mm. I just think but the Slayer moment you go have single defense. target, I I don't, I don't yeah. know. I just think Slayer doesn't have defense. Hmm. Uh, like, it, doesn't have good, it doesn't have great defense, really. Yeah. I really like Masterful Form. I don't feel like that was used enough. I think it's such a cool node. It's it's interesting, but like I would only really use that on bow builds, and for everything else, I would go champion. But that's hard yeah. work's perspective because Fortify is pretty good. Yeah, champion's great. Um. So back to back to making builds and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that's, but this that's is definitely also one good. thing. Is like, oh, no, every every single ascendancy is going to have its advantages and disadvantages, and you're. You're gonna be like, okay, well, I could I could get this instead or this, and it's something where there's not ever going to be like a okay, this is 100% better than the other. Well, unless you're talking raider versus something else, maybe. But um, it's something to not like. That's another thing that I think puts people off about build making is they try to optimize it too much, almost to the point where they're like. I really want this to be the absolute best that I can get it to instead of like, okay, this looks interesting, uh, but uh, so I'm just going to play this and then make changes to it later. Yeah. Because it's, it's not like you can't just respec. Like, I'm, I've am i even considered respecing my Cyclone Slayer to a champion instead. So, um, yeah, it's like, you're, you're also going to have the same gear later. Like, it's... It's it's something to not get too hung up over in just trying to fully min-max the build because you can change some things later. Yeah, that's very true. And the experience is probably the most important part. Something that's pretty important as well is making sure that you are figure out what instance you benefit the most from. Because there are some things that will be like one or two points that are really strong, but then maybe half the ascendancy, like you're just wasting two points. Whereas if you find like an ascendancy, like elementless right now doesn't really, I don't know. There's a lot of things where you're not really using all four points, right? There's like, for example, mm -hmm. Mastermind of Discord is really strong. Yeah. So it can be great for racing, but then you're like, well, well now what do I do? Yeah. <laughs> With like the Merc and Uber Lab, which is great if you're a player that just hates Lab and you don't <laughs> want to do more than Cruel. But um, make sure you try to figure out like... A good feeling to have is like, oh, maybe you're playing Chieftain and you're like, shit, I really want to Salio and I want Tawo and I want Malako and Namu <laughs> and Hinakora. I want an Uber Duber Lab, GGD. I want five Ascendancies. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I'll take that. Oh, yeah. Chieftain, right? Like, I'm doing Chieftain on my next one and it's like, I'm like, I want, I want that one, I want that one and that one. Chieftain's so strong. Yeah. Oh, God. Have you yeah. tried Chieftain yet, any of you? But have you tried Tessa Leo's? Just how it feels? Yeah. It is so nice. The region is like so crazy. I'm about to do a, a region disintegrator build. Mm, I'm I like very that. excited. What skill are you using? <laughs> I'm using Cyclone and either Cast and Crit or Cast and Tunneling Volatile Dead for mapping. Um, although. Dead. Although, okay. okay, the only reason I'm doing that is because of the trailer that showed it. And I was like, fuck, that looks uh... really cool. I want to play that at some point in my life. So even if I just play okay. that for a day, um, I did manage to get uh, an EK helmet on an Elder mm -hmm. Helmet. So I can do EK. Wait, so think... you want to do what? EK Caspian Channel or EK yeah. Caspian Crit? Or... Yeah, yes, either. Whatever I feel like actually feels the best when mapping. Okay. So I'll try both okay. of those. Um, but then I'm trying to think what I want to do for single target because I don't want to spawn corpses and EK is not yeah. going to be a good single target. And Disintegrator has, what is it? Like, yeah, it's like 600 flat to spells. So yeah, maybe really I will use Fireball for my single target. Yeah. I see that working. So, yeah. So I, I've done, I can show it off here real quick. It's, um, already without too much investment, I have like... Nearly 4k about, um, life regen and 1k leech. What about purifying flame for your single target? Yeah, I could look into that. I will be playing around with stuff. I just want something that's a like high damage effect. So I've got an elder combsway and a shaped combsway. 
Mm -hmm. So I should have like, I think it's nine endurance charges or eight. Have you added in here the um Yeah, I've the added 50%. in Tasalio. I put that on uh, my belt. So right, I put it to right. be 70. Yeah. Life recovery ray, because it's not it's additive with itself. And yeah. then I have I have a watcher sai that is life recovery rate vitality and fist damage from hits taking as fire damage. Now in hindsight, yeah. I don't actually need to worry too much about the fist damage because I got so many endurance charges anyway. Um, yeah, that's like that's always a, a weird thing, right? Which way yeah. should you go? Because they're not like they're not additive with each other. Yeah, exactly. I do think if you're not if you're not maxing out on either, actually having both is is quite quite strong. Yeah. So, so I, I like that. So I'm gonna have a 23 purity of fire because I managed to buy an Oscarm with plus two origins. So I'm put oh. put vitality and purity of fire there. So you get 82 fire rest. And then 75 cold and lightning, and I have half my damage taken. Uh, I'm going to use the... What's it called? Rakiatha? Ralakesh? I can't remember. It's the time that's drilled that, that, that does the... Rhyme. That does the 50% of your cold and lightning taken as fire damage. Um, so I'm just super tanking fizz and fire. So what are you doing with like getting your other resist up to par? So it's actually not that hard. Because you only need like, it's, it's not that hard, especially because I do get a hundred fire rest, and I have yeah, purity so of fire, all, you, giving yeah. forty so you know fire. Yeah, so I just need cold and lightning rest, and I need how much is it? I need hundred and forty, hundred and fifty. Well, hundred and eighty from zero, or from minus sixty. Yeah, it's right. actually what? not that bad. One thing I want to note real quick here is not even just like the main skill though that you're going to use or like the skills you're going to use. It's also important to plan out your support skills because like a lot of the times that's also where a lot of your damage is going to come from on bosses and stuff. Like if you're playing a cold build, you're going to you're going to want to have frost bomb in there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so, that's a great tip for people. Like and it, but you also don't want to go like too overkill. So one thing like I do when I'm doing when I'm making a build and I'm like finalizing the supports like I come up with a whole bunch of things that I could use and then like um there's tools online you can do this I usually just use the notes um section on the on POB which is really nice it's basically just a built-in notepad uh is the notes tab mm -hmm. and I'll like plan out where my links are going to be and what I have room for so like you can't have you know too many skills and i'm sure as a lot of people have experienced either playing summoners or even melee now um is that you also need to figure out what you're going to have room for on your um skill bar as well so uh there's you have to make sure that you're not getting too many support skills but you do want to have some form of support for your main skill so that you do more damage like you're not gonna you're generally not going to play a melee build without something like Ancestral War Chief in the build somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that too. And the fact that at some point, um, especially for like smaller bosses, if you say you're using like Frost Bomb and Wither Totem or whatever, like, you know, you have four different things that you set up for single target before you start dealing damage, you know, maybe you could have like cut two of those out and the boss would have been dead already. Yeah. Um, it's definitely wait. important to know. Hockey's is definitely getting annoying. Yeah. It's such a pain. I want like three more for most builds. Like I can never use focus. And yeah. Ugh. Welcome to summoner life. I hate it. I think a good example of this is also what I decided to do on my Assassin, my cast and crit character. Because one thing I noticed is, so I would like cycle on around, right? And on single target to really feel like I could make a dent in some of the high risk higher as dudes, you'd have to frost bomb. And so I got really annoyed by the fact that I had to stop and frost bomb all the time. So an Inquisitor. So I just ignored that step completely. Yeah. Which also allows me to use more active skills. So like it's always a good idea to like see what are what are all the actual steps I have to go through to apply my full damage. And is it is it realistic within a boss fight that I put down my Focus, War Chief, debuff, and I don't know, whatever other three steps that you want to 
add in there or should I try and make it so that you know make it a little easier on myself but yes. then maybe losing out maybe 20% damage but then making it super simple and always you know working and something yeah, maybe it... something that's super important to remember especially for casters is the the suffix you can craft on scepters or whatever you want that is mm. uh, trigger mm -hmm. when cast using that yeah. for things like frost bomb and self cursing is so good because then you can just continue spamming your main ability. That's what I'm doing on my Herald of Agony. I have a trigger one cast recently for Desecrate, Flesh Offering, and Projectile Weakness. Yeah. Things like that that can automate the processes are yeah. nice. Even instant skills can be nice. So like if you're playing a cold build, maybe maybe instead of Frost Bomb, which requires you to stop whatever you're doing and cast it, you use something like Vortex, Vortex Link with Bone Chill in order to increase their cold damage taken. Yeah. Which is an instant skill, so you don't have to stop doing anything for that. You just press the button. Yeah, and it's so much damage. It really adds up. Um, figuring out what, like, another thing for, like, making your build, like I said earlier, is that you can get cheap jewels. And figuring out what jewels, or, like, what, what stats, I guess, you can use on jewels is super important. Um, and you can actually do this very easily in-game by, for example, hovering over an item. So on Cyclone, you see that it's it's AoE, movement, channeling, physical, melee, and an attack. And this will say, and be fairly accurate, for pretty much every spell except Herald. I think Herald's is like the only thing that leads you very astray, because you can't do spell damage for Herald. Is there anything else? Um, You can't use fire damage for SRS. Oh yeah. Wait, what was the question again? Figuring uh, out tags. what stats to get on jewels. The tags are mostly like it usually Don't works, but I think no, really, I'm serious. The, on oh, jewels, yeah. crit chance on jewels is a dead stat. It's like yeah. it's so little. Yeah. Yeah, for crit chance to have been worth it on jewels, it would need to be like forty percent or something compared to the yeah. crit multi. Because fifteen crit multi compared to fifteen crit chance is nothing. Yeah. Um, sadly. There's like there's the most... never a point where you're gonna be desperate enough. The main thing the tags are for is uh what boosts the level of it mostly. But yeah. Yeah. um yeah. Yeah, but it is uh, for it can, most deals a good indicator in figuring out what yeah. to get on jewels. Yeah. It is. Um, so try to make like a list of everything you can use. Like, for example, if you're using Freezing Pulse, right, you can do, um, projectile damage, spell damage, cast speed, and then are you using two handers? Are you using a one hander? Are you using dual wield or a shield? Figure all that out. Make like a big list and then search for jewels and try to get, if you're on softcore, maybe just triple damage. You can get that very cheaply. Or if you're on hardcore, double damage in life or even just one damage in life. Um, I think, go on. I think one of the uh, big ones that can be like misleading or used to be misleading because people don't really play it anymore was like Molten Strike, where it was like technically a melee ability, but all of your damage came from right. the projectiles. Um, also, a lot of people played it with Hand of Wisdom in action, which is lightning, but yeah. uh, it's, uh, so you wouldn't really get fire damage for that. But yeah. Um, yeah. I think uh, something that you really want to consider when buying jewels is dual purpose stats, which is mostly, I would say, attack speed generally. Uh, yeah. Or it can even attack speed and cast speed, anything that makes you go faster in any way. If you have, if you're trying to evaluate what jewels should I get, they give me the same amount of damage. One has a lot of uh, crit multi, and another has a lot of attack speed. And then on the tooltip, it's the same. Well then, do I want to be able to leap them faster or shield shot faster through the map and have equal single target? Or am I relying on a build that needs, you know, if I'm using a Star Forge and I want to shock on the big boss fights, so I would rather have a harder hitting yeah. uh, hits. So it's like, try to figure out what your build is actually like. At the end of the day, what is it you're trying to achieve with your build? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if it doesn't matter, then speed is always key. It's always the the winner. Yeah, yeah. Especially because of things like impale, where you like you'd get you get it to stack faster with more attack speed. Yeah. So your ramp up is faster. 
something worth noting as well is it's not just about all the stats that you need uh, that are like directly correlated to your damage but sometimes you can save maybe a point on your tree uh, like a 30 dex node or a 30 strength node by getting yeah. eight eight dex and eight int or something on a jewel and that's for you for anyone playing right now if you see like um a decent jewel if it has something like stats or resist on it that can skyrocket the value a lot yeah because even though you might not need it and on paper you don't need it in your pob what might happen is that shit i'm i'm short like 12 decks or 15 decks or something yeah. so that could end up adding like i've paid like two or three extra exalts for a jewel just because it had like that 14 decks i needed uh, and i didn't want to get that as a suffix same with like stat rings and so many new players aren't going to think about that or pick it up and put it up for sale but they're even more rare than they necessarily should be because that's yeah. like one of the less obvious things yeah it's like if you get a melee like if you get a good uh amulet for melee and it's on an amber amulet instead of like a lapis amulet it's going to be less value even even more so if you're looking at like a turquoise or something which has even more stats on the implicit technically yeah speaking there's been like several times where i've had like a ring with like you know like 90 or 100 like strength index and maybe they won resistant life which is a really rare ring um but just because even less people are picking them up a new player is just gonna be like stats rule but if somebody is doing like <laughs> pillar of the cage god or deck stacking yeah. then they're gonna pay like five six seven x for a ring like that right so there's a lot of new players right now that are vendoring five or six seven x rings and amulets yeah because Probably. it's just simply not obvious um yeah. and and then you have a lot of those players going like nice scams this and i'm like no it's just it's, there's just nothing else like this for sale <laughs> Um, Especially think, because it's hardcore economy versus... Yeah. yeah. Strength is always powerful. On anything that's life-based, strength is always a good stat. If it's melee and life-based, it's always a good stat to get because mm -hmm. it's damage and life. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say, if, I mean, even in, in, uh, in Dexes as well. But especially for melee. Actually, anything that goes on um, any kind of ring or any kind of item that is really good for melee right now, Stats are like amazing. Any kind of stat. It can be strength, dex, and end. Because most cyclone builds are foils, anyways, right? Yeah. And they all need some end and they all need 212 dex. So if you ever pick up a ring or an amulet that has high stats of any of those, plus other good stats, it's a winner immediately. Yeah. Um. We could move on to the final topics, which is like we talked a little bit about our builds and what we've been playing lately. My girlfriend's home in around 30 minutes. So as soon as she's here, I'm leaving. I'm just saying, I'm out. What? Yep. Okay. She's been in Denmark for 18 days. It's been horrible. <sighs> that sounds great. No. Imagine, imagine having to be in Belfast for years. It's terrible. You're moving here. Yes. <laughs> Imagine my sacrifice. <sighs> but, uh, mm -hmm. Denmark. Uber, tell us a little bit. You were talking about the builds that you have done. What builds, is there any builds that you want to or are willing to talk about before doing them? Any builds you planned um, out? So, I've still got more to work on with the Pledge of Hands, uh, Spectre stuff. The slave drivers are really, really strong. I I was doing Shaper with them last night. I didn't. I, I spent a whole bunch of time making a video on the build before, but uh, that build is one of my favorites I've made so far this league because it just uses so many different weird things that just interact so well with each other. Hmm. Um, I don't know what I have. I don't exactly have something planned next. I'm still kind of working on my current builds, like. My Baron Zombie build is still in progress, uh, and uh, as, and even the Spectre build, like it's pretty maxed out, but like I can still get more damage on it and improve yeah. things. And I still haven't like taken it to Uber Elder, which should be pretty good. Uh, but I'm also optimizing the Animate Guardian on that. But um, like. 
I did kind of want to do an Ice Crash build, although the visual is like terrible. I might do it anyways. Um, because Frost Breath is a pretty cool item that uh, doubles damage on Chilled, and Ice Crash has a whole bunch of flat damage. Hmm. Yeah. It's just and uh, the visual. what are you gonna play that on? Because I've been I've been looking into that. <laughs> um, Slayer is like the kind of obvious choice, simply because like. If, it, if there's something that you do have problems getting crit on, it's maces, especially yeah. a unique mace. So Overwhelm actually is like pretty big on that. Yeah. Uh, so. And and Uber, how do you get your inspiration for builds? Like, do you ever just say like, have an item drop, and you're like, oh, I want to make something around this? Like, where 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 does it start for you? Um, sometimes it's that. Sometimes it's just like seeing various videos, like. There's oh yeah there was the one video uh, showcasing the the one the the keystone that changes what is it it changes a node so that nearby allies and enemies um, generate charges and share charges with you right um, it's like the chest and, as well right yeah and apparently I I didn't realize this I thought this was just like endurance power frenzy charges no it's all charges so it works with void Fletcher because blink arrow oh. mirror blink arrow mirror arrow um Wait. get your quiver so you actually generate void charges way faster by having blink arrow mirror arrow so that sounds busted wait wait it's wait it's actually wait. so cool my wait, I, can i get that quiver we had bro no yo actually my build now that sounds no, busted no, no, no. are you doing serious? Your you're doing chieftain <laughs> that's fine You'll do that. I did Chieftain before. No, 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 no. I don't time. want to do Chieftain. Hold on. Let me go no, back, see if I have No, you're doing more. Chieftain. No, and no, no, no. no. Doing... This sounds great. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Like, I, I need to see if I can find the video of it now. Um, I don't want to do Chieftain. Wait, 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 I think it's called wait, wait, Supreme wait, wait, Grandstanding wait, 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 or something. Thing. Yes, yes, it is. It is. That's that's the one. You, yeah. You can, get the, you can get it on the chest as well, right? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, uh, that's not the same thing? Oh, so doesn't it give you the same thing though, or is it like just half the way there? Or am I like, am I missing something? No, it's it's different. Okay. Uh, I think I have a video. Here of it. charges with you, supreme grandstanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's the so inner conviction is called what? Um, inner conviction is the one that makes power charges give you. Oh, more damage. right, that's the other one. Okay. Supreme Grandstanding. What's the, what what uh, what type is this on? Elegant Hubris. Yeah. That actually okay. is not bad for Mirror Arrow. That's usually something where you could get a stat, like some powerful stats that you would need, right? Yeah, I don't think you use the Mirror Arrow for damage. It's just for charge generation, I think. Oh, just for charge generation? Yep. Interesting. Here, I can put the video in, uh, in actually, just put it in Ziz's chat real quick. Mm. Um it's literally just a proof of concept, but all you need to look at is like the void charge generation. Like you can see the void charges in the top left and mm -hmm. it's really fast how fast they recharge. Cause normally it takes a really long time. It's, it's things like that. Like sometimes you have things like that where uh, you just see a video and you're like, it's just like a proof of concept or something where. Mm -hmm. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. I didn't even consider that. Yeah. Oh. Or I like, you, a quiver. You know, like it's... no, <laughs> <laughs> no, stop, no. What's, what's, oh, God, what here? Really what's the best then? I'm buying a quiver. I'm gonna vol it uh, though. Man. No, stop. Okay, it survived. I I can play it. Sweet. Uh, you can you can you can probably uh if you have your chat uh you can show the video maybe. Hey, can um, you link it in Discord? In our uh, combo sure. here. Yeah, I can link it there. Awesome. Um, just looking at the top left, the void charge generation, it's really crazy. And I've been really interested in seeing uh, if that can be optimized to like a super amazing build or something. It'd be really cool. Um, but yeah, like the the slave driver thing, the specters, um, I was like, I really like using Val Molten Shell on all my builds. Because it's really good for legions, and just having a 10k shield just means like 
it takes a lot for them to break through that. And then once you break through that, you, you know you need to play safe or something or just back off, right? So it was, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, so this works. Um, and Slave Drivers and Pledge of Hands felt like they cleared really well. That was just like an experiment that I did while I was like leveling the character in Blood Aqueducts. I just bought one and like four linked it, just tried out a whole bunch of different things with it and experimented because, well, it's interesting conceptually. This must have uh, millions of damage. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, the, the Void Fletcher thing. It's really, really crazy. You um, think it's intended? Sis, I, I need you yeah. to stop buying quivers. I just bought two. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Did you buy them from uh, Even Neem? Yes. Fucking it. God damn it. <laughs> oh, fire damage to bow attacks. Interesting corruption. But yeah, so <laughs> it was like, it was like one of those things where you're just kind of like, you're kind of like farming low maps for a little bit and you're kind of figuring out what am I going to do with this character? Because like you may not have it fully fleshed out for like the Spectre build and, that I was doing. And I realized uh, Militant Faith with Avarius, it gives a keystone that converts 80% of your mana to armor, which was awesome other than uh, I needed like a mana regen per devotion roll to sustain mana. But I was, I realized like, with those specters, you get to use two different auras that are both multipliers. So I eventually realized I could just use Devouring Diatom. And then I'd have two auras and I'd be able to run Flesh and Stone. So it just like, like one thing after the other after the other just like came together. And eventually I, I came up with a build that just utilizes one thing to fix another to fix another. Uh, to That causes a problem that's fixed by another, you know. It's, um... That it's, is really cool. Yeah. So, a lot, of, a lot of the build planning just ends up being, okay, this is a cool concept. This looks pretty decent as is. And I'm going to play it and then think about what else I could do with it. So. I wonder if we could do Discharge somehow with the Frenzy Shard sharing. <laughs> it's, it's possible. I know somebody else did something similar with, um umbilicus and they had a whole bunch of zombies so like one sip of the uh Dodre's elixir flask would just give them full charges oh yeah that's pretty cool that's kind of messed up for hardcore though i never want to use that belt in hardcore yeah. <laughs> oh yeah no are you buying quivers new i just had a guy <laughs> ask did someone just make a void pleasure build <laughs> oh god what have i done <laughs> oh no I, got I don't two. have a quiver. <laughs> That's why ah. I specifically asked you, do you have any builds that you're okay with sharing on the podcast? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm okay with sharing that. I have plenty of currency. If they if they raise to like 2x, I'm fine. <laughs> if they raise to 25x, I have a problem. <laughs> and so my Uber Elder, has, it makes currency. To be fair, I haven't done a bow build this week, so... No, same. I was like, I was even thinking, I've been looking into a Void Fletcher build and it looks really cool. It's just, I've been trying to make, um, you know, I've been trying to make high delving builds and it's just, I'm getting, I was getting so frustrated by it because it's like all about Nebulok, Mana Guardian, mm -hmm. and defenses. that's about it. It's and so, all defenses. Well, it's, no, but it's, it's like, there's only like two classes or like two options that are like really strong that can actually compete in everything else just isn't strong enough compared like path i just can't make my pathfinder strong enough so i'm like fuck this uh excuse my language and then i'm moving on to like a mapper and then void fletcher is perfect for that void fletcher is really really cool it's just been it's just struggled with the slow charge generation and this solves that issue like tenfold yeah it's crazy like people have made void fletcher bills before um yeah i even mentioned this in my interview i uh i think it's sober uh made a void fletcher build at some point he makes a lot of cool builds who um, in silver um and uh, silver uh in, in so byr that's that's what it's spelled um he makes a lot mm -hmm. of cool uh cool 
built, okay. and he also plays a lot of summoners too. Oh. Um, so uh, I think he did a Void Fletcher build at some point. Maybe I, maybe I'm mistaking him for somebody else. Oh no, he did. Um, three point five. He has a two fifteen Uber Elder. Wow. Nice. That is crazy. Hmm. How much fast effect do you need on a dying sun to get plus two? I think plus four. Or, oh, well, wait. Well, 100%. 100, yeah. <laughs> How do you make something go from two to four, sis? I never said math is my strong suit. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I had a two out of six in math. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're talking about somebody that can't read the 18% on maps. Yeah, that's so. okay. That was mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> we should be able to get that now with Alchemist, Pathfinder, and a Brutal uh, Strain. Oh, but yes, then I can't can. use this stupid thing. Damn it. Yeah, exactly. Think... That's been my that's been my problem every single time. Like, oh, sh oh, I just lost my keystone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You yeah, can get three, been... though. <sighs> yeah. It's been a struggle for me too, because like I have a, I wanted to make an occultist summoner at some point, but and I have mm -hmm. an elegant hubris that makes up for the life and damage that you lose from go, for going necro. But I want, I wanted to do frost sentinels because it has synergy with occultist. Mm -hmm. But uh, the elegant hubris spot is top left, and it gets rid of avatar fire, which is like one of the reasons that frost sentinels can be so crazy is uh you can go avatar fire equilibrium and you can use mm. frost bomb for more res reduction you can use bone chill with cold snap for more damage taken you have you have frog weakness with curse effect and occultist mm. just gives a whole bunch of stuff for frost sentinels it's crazy mm. it's crazy nice so i might i might still do that mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one i forgot about uh that i was thinking about Frost Sentinels are definitely like very underrated. They've just been like They're very cool. overshadowed. By, how do like, you um, how do you feel like all these summoners are are, are like holding up against the uh, the monoliths and the legion stuff? I feel like that's um, like kind of a make or break for so many builds. Like, how do they actually perform? Yeah. against the core league mechanic. It's funny because I was talking with other people and like I said in yeah. the interview, um, aggressive AI is pretty bad for it unless you have absolutely ridiculous damage. Mm -hmm. and ridiculous clear uh aggressive ai tends to hurt you more than it helps because oh. you often you often like end up not being able to full clear or you can't target something specific so like you have this like you have this like card box in the middle of like all these mobs and you want to break that out immediately um but your minions don't care about what you're attacking so they're they just like go off into the middle of nowhere mm. um and surprisingly, with something like zombies, where you can actually control them a little more, I've found a lot more success. And e like, I've been super surprised by the fact that I can actually clear like ninety percent of a monolith with zombies. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. it's it's ridiculous. Nice. I, and I, I think part of that's... that is also because oh. of multi strike targeting. But uh, and that's like oh. the one build where I feel really good about multi strike change. But. I would rather have multi strike be buffed to be clear yeah. before somebody says yeah. that. Before somebody takes that as, oh, I think the new multi strike is better. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I prefer old multi strike. But yeah, uh, yeah. Um, anything that like so like most Spectre stuff is pretty good. Slave drivers uh, with, in Pledge of Hands was awesome. Honestly, yeah. um, it's. Um, as, as the league goes on, I've found more and more summoners that are able to deal with things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, people playing like, like I think I saw. I remember watching you for a little bit. I was just lurking in chat as as uh, playing Herald of Agony, and you were just like doing maps, and you're like, "This sucks so hard for legions. I hate <laughs> I it." I hate it. <laughs> yeah, because it's only one minion, and like even though Herald of Agony isn't aggressive AI, because it's only one minion, you actually like can't really control it you can't multi-strike it None yeah I, like it's so bad for like it'll be standing next to like an incubator thing and attacking the other way and i'm like to the right kill please kill the thing i'm trying to storm run <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah sometimes sometimes you have to use tricks i've i've i'm working on a guide for manipulating ai for things like that 
which probably will make uh, the experience for Herald of Agony a little better for people. Because you can, like, restart the AI and restart the, like, targeting in a way by, like, targeting somewhere else and then targeting back on it again to try again. Or just reposition the Herald of Agony. Yeah, I usually use the complicated and try to do that complicated, like, behind. So it has to attack through the monster. (laughs) It's like, okay, you're attacking that thing over there. Attack through this. Yeah. People are spamming for (laughs) point flesh. Oh, my God. (laughs) Well, I think a lot of people have wanted to do Void Flesher for a long time, but like the charge generation yes. put me off it for a while. This, this is the uh, cyclone effect. No. Uh, oh, actually, on the uh, so that mean that that has to make all the cooldown and recovery stuff really good as well, right? Like Fleetfoot mm-hmm. has to be great with this. Have you actually looked into that? I'm curious because you've made a mirror error build before. Oh, like, that much, I is much- like. Like, Deadeye is almost required. One thing to right. note about Blink Arrow, Mirror Arrow, is that uh, Blink Arrow is the only one that's a movement skill. So, like, the movement skill, skill cooldown stuff with, like, Fleet Foot only oh. affects Blink Arrow. It doesn't affect okay. Mirror Arrow. Okay. So, like, if you, like, you get, like, a sort of desync sort of thing where they have different cooldowns and it makes it, mm. like, a little bit awkward. Because you're, like, doing, like, oh. Blink Arrow, Mirror Arrow, and then Blink Arrow, pause, Mirror Arrow. Blink yes. Arrow, longer pause, Mirror Arrow. Unless you mat, like the one thing you can do to get around that is like get a mirror arrow enchant or something. But like, mm. I I don't even know that getting fleet foot would be worth it or getting that enchant would huh. be worth it to com- combine. I would just probably get like extra cooldown on like your belt or something. That does okay. sound fun. I might try that as like about build this thing. I wonder actually. I'm doing. I it, wonder. Man. I'm I'm gonna do it today. I'm going. Is this your hundred build? Yes. <laughs> now, now I actually wonder if the if the cooldown reduction on um, on fast and deadly would affect the void Fletcher charge generation. That would be really crazy if that was the case, but I don't know for sure. Hmm. It's one of those things where you gotta like throw it in game and maybe test it a little bit. Yeah, because maybe they generate charges faster because of that cooldown. I doubt it though. But I doubt it. Yeah, that's the movement speed thing, right? Uh, that's the that's the just the cooldown one that gives more accuracy rating. Right. Used to give double accuracy. Now it's just fifty percent more. Mm. That would be like almost essential for the build. Mm. It's a shame they're so bad for clearing. Mm. Yeah, because you probably just wouldn't be able them. to do like a proper minion build with it. Maybe. Yeah. Um. It'd be kind of weird. I'd have to look at it more because uh, it's complicated, but um, like maybe you could make it like a minion scaling build as well. I don't know. Because hmm. uh, Mirror Arrow and Blink Arrow actually have really, really insane clear. Um, yeah, honestly. I mean, maybe yeah. it's just maybe it just solves the single target issue it has. It w- it w- it'll never be as broken as it was in Synthesis with the synthesized bow <laughs> with explosions. But... Right. Oh. I literally didn't even need to use GMP because one mob would die and it would kill the whole pack. Yeah, I kind of don't stuff. like that. It's kind of too busted. Yeah, it was yes. a little broken. On, have you guys tried Azanet, by the way? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah, I have. Those <laughs> yep. gloves are so good. Once you start scaling them. Yeah. Have you? Are you? Are you uh, going to like scale those on the your new build, sis, on the chieftain? No, I'm using. Um... Unfortunate. Xenos, Xenos clubs. Oscar. Right. You should definitely consider not using those and, <laughs> and then using Asnets. I don't think I'm going to have a clear really... speed problem though with like EK or Voltal then. Yeah. But I mean, it's like saying like I'll be fine with Arc on, you know, Elementalist and then you add Impulsa and it's like a whole new level, you know? True. It's really fun though, because especially when you get the 100% gain fizz for four seconds. Oh my god. Nice. Oh all yeah. Them, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All the, because you can like 100% yeah. convert and then scale with both fizz and Ellie and fire and AoE is, and everything. I need something that has plus two R gems to get a 23 purifier. Right. Yeah. Wait, ring. Or do you are you locked I'm in using on double rings? comes or AoE gems? Oh, right. right. Yeah, AoE gems works too. 
Oh, so you can big regen. Okay. And you you could even use duration gems if you use like a twenty one Val purity or Val impurity or whatever. Yeah, I just I don't really want to go Val. Like my boots need to be eldered. My my helmet needs to be eldered. <laughs> I was like, you know what, Oscar? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, gives yeah. me ass mark on here, and there were there were seven C's. Right, so I was okay. like, fuck it, this is such a great budget choice for me. I like it. I like yeah. it. Explosion. Always mid next later. Explosion in general. I, I expressed a lot of distaste towards things like impulses for a while because like I don't think people realize that you could scale the damage of the explosion so high that it's doing like a hundred percent more than a hundred percent of monster life is damage. Right. Which is why it was like so powerful. That and the prolif mechanic. Yeah. But it's like think things like Elio overload. off itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things like generic area damage, generic elemental damage, even the minion damage node that lets minion damage affect you, like you you would scale your explosions, and so, like, even even for Azanas, you can get like generic fizz and things like that, and scale the explosions like that. It's pretty crazy how much you can get out of those explosions. Like as Nubi said, crazy. once you start scaling it, it's crazy. Yeah. Um. I think we've covered pretty much most things today. What? Do we just getting into all the fun stuff? We could talk about all the new jewel. Oh. There will okay. be more podcast new game. Also, my <laughs> girlfriend's coming home in five minutes. There's, there's just no way. It is just not happening. This is where we got into all the juicy stuff. It's okay. You gotta, you gotta see to your girlfriend. I, I understand. I'm gonna play different games. Um, but yeah, Uber Elite. Thank you so much for joining me and Noogie on our podcast. It was a pleasure having you here. Where can we find more Uber Elite? Uh, I stream on Twitch.tv slash Uber Elite, uh, the Uber Elite rather. Um, you can see that on the screen. Uh, I have a YouTube uh, under the Uber Clips. Um, and I'm also on Twitter, which is mostly just me, like, posting random stuff. <laughs> it's just you on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But you'll mostly see me on Twitch, and I'm trying to get the YouTube stuff going. Uh, I just recently uploaded a video explaining really in-depth on my Spectre build, which uh, has a lot of mechanics, so it's kind of a long video, but... Uh, uh, I wanted to, you know, ex explain in depth as much as I could. Nice. Because you know, uh, there's a lot of complicated stuff. It'd be interesting to have a podcast with Uber and Carve. It would be like a 10 hour podcast. We should, oh, sis, we can have, we can aim. Yeah? We will get both of them on and we'll make the world's longest podcast. All right. World record. There we go. World record podcast. All right. I'm, I'm done. And uh, and Noogie, where where can we find more Noogie? Noogie Yen, because I'm Asian, you know. Uh, and just type them to Google, and things will pop up. Awesome! Thanks so much for joining us as well. It's always a pleasure doing podcasts with you. And you uh, we'll be back in two weeks. Me and Noogie, as always. And hey. I don't think we have our set guest in two weeks from now. No. It'll probably be racing related because that'll be yes. right after the method race. If you don't know, the the method at Ziri race starts at 26. That's 12 days from now. Mm -hmm. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of cool prizes and more prizes being announced soon. Yeah. 27th is? Well, it's 27th New Zealand time. 26th for most people. It's the Friday. No, is it the Saturday? It might be the Saturday. Whatever. There's a local countdown on Path of Exile <laughs> local, and that's a lot easier than me trying to allocate for time zones. Local countdown way better. Might be the 27th. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys all for joining. And a big special thank you to chat. Can we get an easy clap for chat? Thank you for joining us. And if you're somehow not watching this on my YouTube channel or my Twitch or anything else, then it's been stolen. Help. Ah. Um, I can't even type me. in your chat. I got banned. Oh, yeah. Nice. That's the oh, no, kind of just start to be banned. So, <laughs> on that note, we're going to end. And my name is Zizarin. Thanks for watching. And try to die less than I do. <laughs>